In this video, we're going to focus on Fick's Law of Diffusion. So in this problem, we have a long circular pipe. And this pipe is 10 meters long. And oxygen gas is flowing in this pipe. Now we have the cross-sectional radius of the pipe which is 16 centimeters. And the concentrations are 30 and 10 kilograms per cubic meter. Now diffusion is a process where material moves from a region of high concentration to low concentration. So imagine if you sprayed perfume in a room. The gas particles will spread out in all directions it's going to move away from a region of high concentration toward a region of lower concentration. Now we're given the diffusion constant, which is represented by the symbol D. It's 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 square meters per second. So how can we use this information to calculate the diffusion flow rate? The diffusion flow rate represented by some equations as the symbol J, it represents the amount of material that travels per unit time. Now the amount of material could be the mass in kilograms, it could be the amount in moles, or the number of molecules, so it can vary based on what units of concentration you're dealing with. In this case, the concentration is mass per volume, which is equivalent to density. So therefore, for this problem, the diffusion flow rate is going to be the amount of kilograms of oxygen that flows per second. So now for the important part. What equation can we use to calculate the diffusion flow rate? And here's the formula. The diffusion flow rate, represented by the letter J, is equal to the diffusion constant times the cross-sectional area times the difference in concentration, C1 minus C2. So on the left, the concentration C1 is 30 kilograms per cubic meter. On the right, C2 is 10 kilograms per cubic meter. And then it's inversely related to the length of the pipe. So let's go ahead and plug in what we know. So the diffusion constant is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And the units square meters per second. And then the area, we have a circular pipe, so the cross-sectional area is going to be pi r squared. So it's pi times the radius, which is 16 centimeters, and if we convert that to meters, we need to divide by 100. So that's 0.16 meters squared. And then multiplied by the change in concentration, which is 30 and minus 10, and the units are kilograms per cubic meter, divided by the length of the pipe which is 10 meters. Now let's focus on the units. So cubic meters will cancel the square meters here and it will cancel one of the two meter units that we have here. So we're going to have one left over which will cancel with the meters on the bottom. So the units for the diffusion constant in this example is going to be kilograms per second. Now, for those of you who might be confused by that process, let me show you to you another way. So D has the units square meters per second. And the area is square meters. The concentration is kilograms per cubic meter. Now, length is in meters, but that's on the bottom, so that's going to be 1 over meters. Meter squared times meter squared that's going to be meters to the fourth power. And on the bottom, meters cubed times meters to the first power. 3 plus 1 is 4. And so you can see that the units is going to be kilograms per second. So now let's go ahead and plug in the numbers. And let's see what answer we're going to get. So the answer for this example 
is 2.9 times 10 to the minus 6 kilograms per second. So that's the quantity of oxygen that flows through this pipe every second, according to this formula. Now let's move on to part B. So how many kilograms of oxygen will flow through this pipe in 15 minutes? So let's use uh, unit conversion to get the answer. So we have a time of 15 minutes, and the diffusion flow rate is in kilograms per second. So we need to convert minutes to seconds. One minute is 60 seconds. And if we multiply the time by the diffusion flow rate, this will give us the amount of oxygen that's going to flow through this pipe in 15 minutes. So that's going to give us the mass in kilograms. So make sure the units make sense. They cancel in such a way to give you the desired unit. So it's going to be 15 times 60 times 2.9 times 10 to the minus 6. And so that's going to be 2.61 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms, which is a very small amount. So if you want to convert that to grams, just multiply by 1,000. So that's 2.61 grams. Now part C. Calculate the concentration gradient. The concentration gradient is the change in concentration divided by the length. So it's C1 minus C2, so that's 30 minus 10, divided by 10 meters. So the change in concentration is 20 kilograms per cubic meter, and we're going to divide it by 10 meters. So therefore, 20 divided by 10 is 2. So the concentration changes by 2 kilograms per cubic meter every meter. So the units for the concentration gradient for this example is technically kilograms per meter to the fourth power. Now let's move on to part D. What is the concentration of oxygen 2 meters away from the end of the pipe at high concentration? So let's stretch the pipe. Let's make it very long. So let's say the concentration is 30. Let me put these numbers on top. And here it's 10. So let's call this position 0. And this is 10 meters to the other side. So we want to find a concentration gradient at 2 meters from the end where the concentration is high. Now the concentration gradient tells us how much the concentration changes per meter. So it changes by 2 kilograms per cubic meter every meter. So 1 meter away, this is going to decrease by 2. So this is going to be 28. 2 meters away is going to be 26. And so this is the answer for part D. Now let's go ahead and finish the rest. Let's say 3 meters, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 10. So at 3 meters, it's going to be 24, then 22, and then 20 and then 18, 12, I mean not 12, 16, 14, and then 12. So as you can see, the concentration gradient tells us how much the concentration changes as we travel one meter along the pipe. So it decreases by two every meter. Now let's focus on the last part. How long will it take 100 kilograms of oxygen to travel through this pipe? Hmm, it looks like I forgot the word it. So how can we find the answer? So what we're going to do is start with the amount of oxygen, 100 kilograms. And then we're going to divide the mass by the diffusion flow rate. So in one second, 2.9 times 10 to the 6 kilograms of oxygen will flow. So this gives us the time in seconds, which is probably going to be a very, very big number. So let's convert that to minutes. So the 60 seconds per minute, and let's convert minutes to hours. One hour is equal to 60 minutes. Now let's just see what the answer is going to be for now. So 100 divided by 2.9 times 10 to the minus 6, that's a very big number. And if we divide that by 60 and divide it by 60 again, that's 9,578.5 hours.
So let's convert that to days. So that's 24 hours per day. So if we divide our answer by 24, we can get a more reasonable number. So it's about 399.1 days. And so it's going to take a long time for 100 kilograms of oxygen to travel through this pipe.